Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about DaVinci Resolve, which is a free video editing software that you can use to do video editing stuff, color grading, and so on. It also allows us to do visual effects. So first of all, in order to download DaVinci Resolve, all you need to do is go over to blackmagicdesign.com. You can simply type it in Google and click on this website. And this will take you to the website where if you scroll down, you will see that you have an option to download DaVinci Resolve for free. So all you need to do is choose your uh, appropriate platform that you're using. So if you're a Windows user, click on Windows, and this will take you to the sign up page where you all you need to do is give your details, and this will allow you to download DaVinci Resolve for free. Okay, so once you're done with the download process and setting up DaVinci Resolve, then once you open up DaVinci Resolve, you will see that we have this interface at first where all our projects will be located. So first of all, you can see we have this local database in which we have this untitled project. This is by default. You can click on this or you can simply create a new project by right clicking your mouse or you can click over here and create a new project. So let's create a new project and type in DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Let's hit create. So here we are in our DaVinci Resolve project. And the first thing that I want to show you is that if you go over here and click this DaVinci Resolve option, you'll see that we have some options such as keyboard customization. Here you can check out all the keyboard shortcuts that we have for DaVinci Resolve. You can also change them according to your needs. I'm just going to keep them at default. I'm just showing you so that you can check out different keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. From here, you can check for updates for DaVinci Resolve. And the next one we have is preferences, where you can adjust your uh, preferences according to your system requirements and so on. I'm just going to keep them at default. Okay, so now let's talk about these tabs over here at the bottom. These are the main tabs that DaVinci Resolve provides us. So the first one is this media pool where we can import all of our project files. The next one we have is this cut section where we can cut different footages into different parts or easily editing them later on. The third one we have is the main one, which is the timeline. So this is where most of our video editing will take place. Next up we have is the fusion tab. Here we can add our visual effects to our video. Next up, we have the color grading section where we can add color grading to our footages. The next one we have is this audio section where we can add audio editing stuff. And finally, we have the deliver option where we can set the export settings for our video. So first of all, let's talk about this media pool. Here you can import your project. So especially if you have a large project, a large number of files, you can add all your files over here in order to manage them in a better way. Okay, so I have this uh, project over here in which I have these three files. The first one I have is this background audio file. The next one I have is a video footage. And the next one I have is an image. So let's drag these over here. And you can see we have them added. And once we go ahead in our edit section, you can see that they are present over here as well. So let's go back and delete them for now. You can simply delete them by selecting remove selected clips or you can also press shift and backspace or simply backspace so the reason i did that is to show you that you can also import your files over here if you simply want to do a quick edit so let's drag our files over here and you can see that we have these imported from here as well now let's drag our footage to our timeline and here you can see a new time created automatically for us if you want to create another timeline you can simply right click over here and go over here in the timelines and click on create new timeline and this will allow you to create a new timeline so for now let's delete this okay so this timeline that we have over here you can see that our uh, footage has been imported and you can play that you can play this footage by clicking space on your keyboard and to stop it once again click space and this will stop your 
footage and you can simply move around the marker by clicking okay so one important thing to note here is that in order to move around in your timeline you, there is a shortcut which will help you a lot which is that if you press control and uh, scroll with your mouse wheel you will be able to move around in your timeline and in order to zoom in and zoom out all you need to do is press alt on your keyboard and once again use mouse wheel to scroll up and down so this will allow you to easily uh, go about in the timeline and easily edit your videos okay so first of all let's talk about how we can edit this footage by doing a simple trim so if we go over here we will see that we have an option like this and if we do this we will be able to trim our audio a similar thing we can do from this side as well you can see that we have shortened our video or trimmed our video but one thing you will notice is that the audio section of the video was not changed because it was not selected so unlike a uh, software like premiere pro in which both of these clips will be linked together in this you will have to manually do that so first of all let's click ctrl z twice and now let's select them both and now you will see that they are being trimmed all together. So this is one thing that you need to keep in mind in order to make sure that your audio of the footage also matches with the actual footage itself. Okay, so let's just go and undo them for now. And one other technique to trim your videos is that you can select this trim tool or this blade edit mode. And uh, another way to select this by Pressing B on your keyboard, and now let's go ahead and make sure that if you want to also cut your audio section of the video as well, you will need to make same uh, cut in the same section. Change our audio and video at the same time. We can simply delete our footages as well by simply pressing backspace on our keyboard and or we can select them and press right click and then we will have an option of delete selected so, and now let's talk about transitions so first let me add this image over here as well and let's trim this a bit that's over here okay so as you can see that currently if we play this we don't have a good or nice transition over here between the two clips so in order to add a transition all you need to do is go over here in the toolbox and here you will see we have video transitions so let's select this blur dissolve and drag this over here between the two clips if you play this now you can see we have a nice looking uh, transition available to us let's remove this for now let's click ctrl z to undo and select another one see how this looks like and you can see that this effect also works well and let's zoom in a bit and you can see that we have this effect added over here this transition added over here we can also extend this like this by simply dragging it you can see that this transition will be extended we can also make it shorter as well so this is a quick way to add transitions within your video within your footages you can also add effects to your video by going over here in the effects section or simply go over here in the open fx let's select this gaussian blur and add it to our image and let's select our image and over here you will see that we have this transition of uh, sorry this effects option if you select it you will see that we have this Gaussian blur option where we can change the blur settings and if you don't like the effect you can simply delete it okay so now let's talk about keyframing so first of all if we select any image any footage you can see that we have this transform option available to us so first of all let's go ahead and change the zoom in order to fit this image to our screen you can simply drag this and this will uh, 
zoom in into the image that we have. We can also change the position of the image, the rotation angle, the pitch, the yaw. We can flip it as well. In order to undo all of the all of what we did, we can simply press this button over here. This will undo all the settings for us. And let's keep the zoom in for now. And over here we have this cropping section as well. So we can also crop our video like this. And if you want to see how this looks like, or if you don't want to select it, you can simply unselect it from here. And this will make sure that the cropping option is not selected. But if you want to select it, you can simply press this once again. And if you want to change all of these all together, you can simply press this button over here. And this will move the settings back to the default version where at which they were. Okay, so next we have this composite where we can set the opacity. And you can also change the composite mode from here. So this is basic, the basic settings that DaVinci Resolve provides us that we are mostly going to be using at the basic level. I'm not going to talk about the stabilization, the lens correction for now. I'm just so, simply showing you the basic settings that we can do with DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so now let's see how we can add keyframes to our videos. First of all, let's go back here to the footage and select it. And over here, you will see that uh, with all of these settings, we have these buttons present to us. And if you select any of them, let's select zoom for now. If you select it, it will turn red. So what this indicates is that a keyframe has been added. So a keyframe has been added at this position. And let's select our marker and move it all the way here. And let's change the zoom in option. So let's change it to 1.5 and press enter. And you can see, and you will see that a keyframe has been selected for us automatically because we have already added the keyframe at the start. Now we have a keyframe at this position as well over here. Okay, so one other thing that you, you will notice is, is that over here we have an arrow. This means that if you select it, it will take us to the keyframe that was present before that keyframe. So this was the initial keyframe. And if we see that now this position, this arrow is indicating that we have a keyframe after this, you can simply select it and it will take you to that keyframe that was selected or that was created after it. So this is an easy way to move around your keyframes as well. Okay, one other thing regarding keyframes is, is that, so you will see that we have this icon over here, one that looks like this. Let's select it and you will see that we have a keyframe uh, option available to us within our timeline. So you can see that we have this keyframe that we just added, two keyframes that we just added with the zoom option. So you can also go ahead and click over here and you can change, uh, or you can see other keyframes of different options that we might have added. For now, we just have the zoom one that is, sh that is showing over here. So you can also move these around as well. And you can also add this ease in, ease out effect as well. So, so let's select this keyframe. And over here, you will see that we have an option of easing in, easing out. And let's select this and you will see that we have this ease in option created for us. So let's play this and you will see that we have a nice looking ease in effect created for us. So this is how you can play around with the keyframes. Okay, so for example, if we want to change another keyframe, let's, let's suppose that we want to change the position as well and create it a keyframe over here and over here we change the keyframe to this position. So you will see that we have this option available to us, but now the zoom in option is not uh, available or it's not showing. So in order to change that, you can simply go back to the zoom in section. And this will open up the zoom in section. And once again, if you want to move back to the position, you can simply go back to the position. Just make sure the right option is selected over here.
otherwise you won't see the options you can also adjust it accordingly on this position as well currently if you do not need these keyframes you can simply press backspace by selecting both of them and it will remove the keyframes from here as well uh, so this is how you can play around with keyframes this will be very useful in order to edit videos quickly now let's talk about how you can add text into your videos so over here you will see we have titles and if you click this you will see we have an option of any text so let's add our text over here let's extend it till this position all right so here you can see we have our text added we can change the text from here we can change the font family font face font size and there are many different options that you can choose from you can also add a stroke drop shadow you can also add a background as well so let's remove this for now and you can also change the settings you will also have the settings, the position, the zone. Okay, so this is how you can add text and you can once again do the same things that you did with the footages, such as you can set keyframes, you can do the cropping, the opacity, and so on. Okay, so one last thing that I want to show you is that how you can fade in and fade out uh, into different footages. So this is very simple. First of all, let's select this footage and over here you will see we have this silver looking icon. If you click and drag this over here, you will see that we have a nice fade in looking effect available to us. And now let's select this image and over here, once again, you will see we have this silver looking icon. Let's drag this here and now you'll see that we have this fade out effect. So let's do the same thing for our text. This is a quick way to add fade in and fade out effects within your footages. Okay, so this looks nice. So now let's delete this uh, audio file that was uh, with our footage. And now let's add this background music. I'm simply going to trim this. And I'm also going to fade this out from the end. And now let's select our audio. So here you will see that we have audio settings available to us. We can change the volume, decrease it, increase it, change the fan, the pitch, and also use equalization for our audio. These are the basic techniques that you can use for editing your videos if you are just a beginner for DaVinci Resolve. And now let's see how it looks like. Nice. So once you're done with your video, in order to export it, you need to go over here in the deliver section. And here you will see we have this custom export option. You can set the file name, the location, and there are different options available to us. What I mostly like to use and I would recommend is you go over here in the YouTube preset and select it. And you can add your file name, your file location, resolution, frame rate. And I like to keep all of these at default. And once you're done with that, select add to render queue. And once, you're, once you've added it to the render queue, you can simply select render all. So here you can see the video was rendered. I hope you like this tutorial. Make sure to leave your feedback in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.